Welcome to Make a Memory Bear. Today's tutorial is for Brookie Bear, which is the latest pattern in my collection. So I'll be making mine on a sewing machine, but this is certainly a pattern that you could make by hand as well. Uh, you'll also need the pattern, which there is a link to purchase the pattern in the description box below. And then you'll need some basic stuff. You're gonna need scissors, you'll need pins, you'll need matching thread. And if you're going to be giving this to a child, I strongly recommend safety eyes and noses. I'll be using 15 millimeter eyes and a 17 millimeter nose. Also a small bag of polyfill stuffing. A couple of other optional supplies would be a seam ripper to help you make a starter hole for those eyes and nose. And black embroidery thread if you want to put on eyelashes or a mouth and then I've started using these weighted poly pellets these are weighted little beads that you can put in the bottom of the bear to give it some weight and to help it sit upright today I have two little girls dresses that are going to be turned into my memory bear and I love to use two different fabrics um I call one fabric A, and that's going to be used for the bulk of the bear. That's going to be the yellow with the polka dots. And then fabric B is used for our accent pieces. And that's going to be this pink and green and yellow floral one. And what I decided to do today was cut these little dresses into panels. And then I'm going to iron those panels and get them all ready to go before I start cutting out my pattern pieces from the from the cloth. Okay, so you're about to see the first mistake that I'm going to make in this tutorial, which is regarding my fabric. This fabric is a cotton blend, and I really love it for memory bearers. It is very stiff. It is very sturdy. There's not much give to it. And I make the decision to add on an iron-on interfacing, which is normally something you would put on the back of like a really stretchy fabric. Mm -hmm. I got this roll on Amazon and I love it, but I'm about to iron it onto the back of both of my different types of fabric. Neither one of them need it. And as a result, it's going to make it really, really hard to work with because it's so thick and it's so stiff in the end. But I did want to keep this in there because I wanted to show you uh, what this looks like in case you've never heard of iron-on stabilizer before or iron-on interfacing. It's got a rough side and then it's got a really smooth side and you just put your rough side on the back of your fabric, on the wrong side of your fabric, just to iron it straight on and it really does make it really nice and sturdy. If you've got a thin, a delicate, a really stretchy or porous type of material, I love this stuff. I simply shouldn't used it, shouldn't have used it in today's video. And so while you watch me add even more stabilizer onto my other fabric that doesn't need it, I'll just let you know that I was so discouraged by the time I finished filming this uh, tutorial all the way through to the end that I decided that I wanted to make the tutorial again featuring different fabric that did not have the interfacing on the back just so you could see um, how easy it is to put this bear together because I really struggled in a couple of parts of this tutorial due to this fabric. So I'll point those parts out because I'm going to use clips from both of the tutorials that I ended up recording. So for the second bear that I'll be making today, I get really crazy and I decide to do an entire batch of clothing that I was given. I'm going to make a bear out of all of these different little dresses and receiving blankets and I'm going to make a super eclectic kind of patchwork bear. So I'm following the same process where I 
cut all of my little dresses and stuff into these panels so that they're strips of fabric that I can iron and it's going to be easier to work with. Most of these fabrics, just like the other ones, are really nice and sturdy cotton blends, so they do not need interfacing. Here's a linen type of fabric. Love it. Perfect for a memory bear. However, we do have this one fabric, this blue with the white polka dots, that is actually quite stretchy. And if I were to make a memory bear with this and then try to stuff it, it's going to get really bulbous and it's going to lose its shape. It's not going to be able to um, maintain its shape well. So I am going to add the iron-on interfacing just to the blue and white. And here you can see just how much that interfacing helps with that stretching and it makes it a much stiffer and sturdier fabric. For my next mistake, what I didn't realize when I went to print out my pattern is that my settings were not set to print at 100%. It printed out at like 90 or 80 something percent. So my pattern pieces are all smaller than they should be, which combined with putting interfacing on fabric that didn't need it really caused me to struggle. But that is the next step is you want to print it out at 100% and then cut out all the pattern pieces on the solid line. This is a tip that I learned from another YouTuber who took these uh, placemats. I picked mine up at Walmart for like 97 cents each. And I learned from her to glue my pattern pieces onto the placemat and then cut them out and it makes them much sturdier. If you're making a ton of memory bears like we do at this house, this really helps to um, extend their life. So I'm going to be using just a spray on adhesive that I have and I just squirt some onto the back, stick it onto the placemats and then I cut them out. And yes, it did end up being a lot of cutting on this day because I had to cut the pattern pieces out of the paper and then I will end up cutting them out of the placemats and then I'm going to cut them out of the fabric. But I do feel like it's worth it in the end because the pattern pieces are going to have um, a greater thickness to them. They just feel heftier and like they can withstand wear and tear a little bit better. And I'm just going to stick them in an envelope or in a Ziploc bag. And I can hopefully keep this exact set for like a lot of years instead of having to print a new one every time. So before we start cutting into our fabric, I want to discuss what it means on these pattern pieces where it says something like um, cut four to reverse or cut two, one reverse. Essentially what that means is some of the pattern pieces need you to cut it out the regular way like this, and then it needs some cut reverse, meaning the opposite direction. So what I have found is the simplest method for this is to fold the fabric. I like to do it with the right sides together just to make it easy so they're all set up and ready to go for the next steps, which is sewing, pinning and sewing. So I fold my fabric with the right sides together. And then when you place your pattern piece on and cut it out, it's automatically going to make it where you have one going one way and the other, the opposite one is going the reverse way. So this one says cut to one reverse. Um, and when I cut these out and separate them, one's going to be forward, one will be reverse. I hope that makes sense. Just fold your fabric together and then cut these pieces out, bottom line. The other step we need to take right now is deciding which pattern pieces go with which fabric. The yellow one is my fabric A, which is for the bulk of the bear. And so that's the front of the body. The tail is going to be cut out of the accessory, the fabric um, B. The arm goes with A, the snout goes with B. Legs go with A, head goes with A. You get the point. I'm just separating out right now so that I don't cut the pieces out of the wrong fabric. Um, with the ear, we actually need two from A and two from B. So I'll be cutting a couple out of both pieces of um, 
fabric for the ears. I am sick, by the way. I'm sure you guys can hear it in my voice, but I'm not really on uh, all cylinders today either. I apologize. And because I decided to make this other wild bear out of eight different fabrics, here I'm just showing you a bit of my process trying to figure out which fabrics should be next to each other, which ones are going to be for the body, which is the head, the snout, blah, 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 blah. So this is just a little behind the scenes of me trying to figure it out because I, I made a bold decision. Uh, next, I'm going to be tracing my pattern pieces onto the fabric, and I picked up these little fabric pens um, on Amazon, and the one I'm using today is one that says it's like a air erase or something like that, like it just dissolves with air over time. But uh, while I'm doing this, okay, for the arms and for the legs, because we need a total of four pattern pieces. I have found it's best practice to only do two at a time. So instead of like folding my fabric in half again, I'm going to trace it out one time, then I'm going to find a new spot on my fabric and I'm going to trace it out a second time. Um, it's just better because otherwise your edges can get really rough and kind of wonky. So after I, re um, after I trace each pattern piece, I just put a couple of pins in it to hold my two layers of fabric together. And I'm going to do that with every pattern piece. You'll notice here, I can barely even get the doggone pin stuck into this fabric because it's so thick and hefty. And we do have two pattern pieces um, with this particular bear that are different than most. On the face and the snout, you'll notice it says fold fabric on this edge. And we essentially want the face and the snout to just be one big piece instead of having a center seam going down the middle. So fold your fabric and then place your pattern piece right up to that edge. And then... Um, we're going to trace all around it and cut all around there, but we will not be cutting that edge that's up against the fold. So the face should be just one solid panel like this and the same thing for the little snout. And I like to keep all of my pattern pieces with their template just so I remember what piece is which. And finally, let's sew. We're going to start with the ears. Grab one ear from fabric A and one from fabric B and place them with the right sides together. Pop a pin in it and we're just going to be sewing around the curved part of the ear. We'll leave that flat edge open so we can add our stuffing. I like to take my scissors and cut these little corner pieces off. I think they call them uh, the little dog ears. It just helps it lay flatter when I'm attaching the ears. I also am going to cut tiny little snips all around this curve because when we turn it right side out, out, that's going to help it lay a little bit smoother, look cleaner, and a better finish. Speaking of turning right side out, this is one of the pieces that gave me a really hard time with the yellow polka dot fabric because it was so darn thick. Trying to turn these little pieces right side out was a bit of a challenge, but a piece of cake with this blue and green. And then I'm going to take just a little tiny pinch of stuffing and pop it in the ears before our next step. We're going to open up the face of the bear. And if you're using two fabrics, this would be fabric A. And we're going to take our ears, stuff the stuffing up to the edge and get it out of the way of the seam where we're going to be sewing. And we're going to flip this so that fabric B is face up. We're going to be placing this little triangle notch right here 
uh, it lines up with the edge of this dart. So make sure your edges are all lined up. The triangle is at that top edge. And then we're going to be folding the other half of the dart on top so that we're essentially sandwiching our ear inside the dart. Just pop a pin or two in to hold it in place. And then we'll repeat the process for the other ear. We want to make sure that the rounded edge of the ears are pointed towards the center of the face and towards each other. So just take a moment to make sure that your ears look like my ears before you sew them into place and make sure that that fabric B is the one that's face up because I have even messed this up myself a couple of times in the past. So just take a second, make sure it looks right. And then we sew it into place by going over that little dart. And I do make sure to back stitch and go over this once or twice just to make sure that ear is really secure and repeat that on both sides. So it should be looking like this. And here's our little purple bear, just for comparison. And now we're gonna fold those ears over so that the edge of the ear lines up with the edge of the face. And we're going to pin that in place and then sew those down. Now you can see how the fabric B is the one that's gonna be facing us when this bear is complete. So here's the yellow one, and here's the little purple bear we're making. We're ready to put the snout onto the face, and we do that by having it upside down with the right sides together. And we need to make sure that the center of the snout matches the center of the face. So you can do two techniques. One I'm demonstrating here, where you fold the snout in half and you put a tiny little snip, a little bitty cut there, that shows you where the center is. On the face, all I did was folded it in half and made a crease. So I'm lining that little center cut up with the crease on the face. I want it upside down, I want right sides together, and I'm gonna put my first pin right there. And again, this fabric is so doggone tough, I can barely get a pin through. But anyway, then I just manipulate the face. I find it's easiest to turn the face so that you can line the edge up with the edge of the snout and just put a bunch of pins in and go all the way from the center point to the edge and then you'll go back to the center and do the other side to that edge until it's completely pinned in place. and then we sew that curve. The second step of doing the snout is sewing it closed. So we're gonna fold the face in half. We're gonna line up these snouts. 
But most importantly, we want to make sure that the seam at the bottom of the snout is lined up. So we'll start by putting a pin in there and then just put in a couple of additional pins to make sure we've got a nice clean edge there before we sew it. So while I'm pinning and sewing this now, I want to talk about this a little bit more in depth because as you see here, I kind of just sew this straight down from the top of the snout all the way to the bottom of the neck, which is totally fine. You can do that. What happens though is that it kind of gives the snout a very straight appearance. I'm going to pop in a picture of the finished little purple bear. It's really straight. And I intended it to be more like this, where it kind of curves on the snout, and then I would pick up my presser foot and go straight down on the neck just to give it a slightly more curved snout appearance, which I did when I was drafting this bear. And I think this snout just looks a little bit better, more what I intended. It's a little bit more rounded. So if you want to make yours a little bit more of an intentional curve and then straight down to the neck, go for it. If you want to do just a straight line, that's fine too. It's going to be a cute bear no matter what. Next, we're going to put the eyes and nose on. Now, earlier I said I always use 17 millimeter on this bear, but in this case, I accidentally used a 20. I'll show you what that looks like in the end. Uh, 15 millimeters for the eyes. And what I like to do is fold the bear's face in half, exactly in half, make sure it's real nice and flat and lined up. Then I'm going to take my pattern template and just lay it on top just so I roughly have an idea of where the eye is supposed to be placed. But this is your bear. You can stick these eyes absolutely anywhere you want to, but just have a rough idea of where you want to go. Take a seam ripper and put a teeny weeny little starter hole in there, teeny weeny. And be sure that you do not put your starter hole in the seam or it's going to loosen up those threads and your bear could fall apart. Once you have your starter holes, just pop the eyes in, make sure the backs are on nice and secure, and then you can go over to the other side. Uh, because you poked through both sides of the fabric, you're going to have a starter hole in the same spot on both sides of the face. For the nose, I like to put mine right above where that snout seam starts so that the tip of the nose kind of covers up the start of that seam. So again, with my seam ripper, I'm going right above the seam, not into it, or it's going to tear that seam out. I'm putting a teeny weeny starter hole. I'll put my nose in, put the back on, and then I'll take a few moments to try to line it up so that the center of the nose lines up with that seam going down the center of the snout. And as I mentioned, I accidentally grabbed a 20 millimeter nose uh, for my, my purple bear, and it's intended to have a 17 millimeter. So this is what the 17 millimeter nose looks like. It's a subtle difference, but just wanted to point it out. Next is the front of the body, which is a really easy step because we're just sewing straight here on this edge that has the little triangle notch. So it should look like this once it's sewn together. And my little wild bear is about to get even wilder. Look at this bold choice. Whew. These patterns are getting crazy. But here we go. We're going to attach the head to the front of the body. Most importantly, we want the seam that goes down the face to match up with the seam that goes down the body. So start there. Line those up. What I like to do is lay the seams from one going to the left and the other going to the right just so there's less bulk there. And then I'm gonna pop a pin in. You're gonna notice that the head is round shaped and the body is squared off. So just line them up as best as you can and pop a pin in right where the body stops and we'll just sew straight across there.
For the arms, we're going to separate them into four separate arm pieces, and we'll take one at a time and place it right here on this straight edge on the front of the body, right below the neck. Just pop a couple of pins in there. And you do want to make sure that your right sides are together and that the hand of the arm is down here by the belly. And then just repeat on the other side and sew them into place. The legs are just like the arms where we're going to separate our four leg pieces into individual pieces and we're going to be placing these right along this straight edge of the body and you flip it so that the right sides are together and you want the foot to be pointed up by the snout of the bear and then we're just going to pin and sew right along this straight edge. This little purple bear is looking more like a Frankenstein with every single step. Good golly. The back of the head is quick and easy. We're just sewing this one straight seam with the uh, triangle notch. Very straightforward. The tail is a lot like the ears where we're just going to place the right sides together and then sew along the curved area, but not along the bottom because that's where we put in the stuffing and attach it. So again, like the ears, I'm going to be putting little clips all around the curved area before I turn it right side out. And this was a chore. Uh, with all those layers of fabric and the interfacing and the fact that I printed this pattern smaller than it's supposed to be. It was a real humdinger trying to turn this tail right side out, but I got it. Then you just put a little pinch of stuffing in it, just like with the ears, put it all the way to the seam so that um, we can attach it, and then just set it aside because we're moving on to the back of the bear next. We'll begin by separating our back pieces into two separate pieces facing each other like this. We start with the dart. So you're going to fold up the lower half of the body so that you get a straight seam there and just pop one or two pins in and we'll be sewing straight across that dart. You do the same thing on the other side. So again, make sure your fabric is facing up, fold up the lower half of the body onto the dart so that you get a straight seam and then we'll just zip right across there. Moving on to the next step on the backs. I like to lay my back pieces so that they're mirror images of each other. And we're going to be starting on the side with these two triangle notches. We will not be sewing in between those notches. That's going to be our stuffing hole. But we'll sew above it and all the way down below it, down to this point. But what we need to do is right underneath this bottom triangle, we need to sandwich our little tail right there. So I'm just gonna place it directly below the triangle notch. I'm gonna grab a pin and just stick it in there to temporarily hold it into place. 
and then I'll place my other back piece on top of it so that the right sides are together with the tail in between and then I'll pin all um, below that triangle notch where the tail is and above the top triangle notch take it over to the sewing machine and sew it into place So just checking in, let's make sure that yours has a hole in the back for the stuffing and that your little tail is right below the stuffing hole. We attach the back of the head to the back of the body just like we did for the front of the head to the front of the body. We start by lining up that center seam that goes down the head and the body. And again, I'm just going to be folding the seam on the back of the body one direction and on the head the opposite direction just to cut down on the bulk. I only pop one pin in here if I can get it through this fabric and uh, it's such a straightforward seam I just go straight to the sewing machine and sew right across. The arms and legs get attached to the back of the bear just like we did for the front of the bear. The only difference is we have these little triangle notches that are indicators that show you exactly where you need to line up your arms and legs. So just put the arms right there, right up next to the head. And then for the legs, there's these triangle notches down here. Make sure your fabrics are always right sides together but just use that little triangle as an indicator where you need to place your legs and pin and sew them into place. We have a really big step coming up here. We're going to be attaching the back of the body to the front of the body. So we're just going to lay them with the right sides together. And I like to start up at the top. I want the center seam to line up with the center of the front of the head. And then down at the bottom of the bear, I want the center seams to line up there as well. And then uh, I'm just going to be taking a bunch of pins and lining up all of my edges Around um, the foot, we are not going to be sewing the sole yet, so you can leave that open. But everywhere else, you do want to place pins and make sure all your edges are aligned. Uh, the sides of the body, these arms. And I'm just doing this really fast just to give you an idea. But I technically use a lot more pins than this before I start sewing. You can really start anywhere because uh, you're going to be doing the entire perimeter except for the soles of the feet. So just start somewhere, go nice and slow, and go all the way around your bear. It's really easy to like go off the rails with this one, especially because you have to pick up your presser foot and turn it around and stuff. So just take your time with that. And when you're done, I grab some scissors or snippers and I go around to some of the major joints like um, the top of the foot that's really curved, but also that like ankle area. I want to make sure to put a snip there. Um, I usually do one, well, I usually do the, the hands too because I want those to open up nicely when we turn this right side out. And oftentimes I'll do one right at that neck joint because I want that to flip right side out. 
and uh, just a sneak preview. This is a nightmare to turn the sucker inside out because <laughs> it's just so stiff. So I'll probably show you how I do it on this crazy little wackadoodle bear. But we're not ready to turn it right side out just yet because we still need to do the soles of the feet. So on the sole of the foot, you're going to notice that we got these four little triangle indicators here that help us line it up correctly. But these on the side, they're not like directly in the middle. They're closer to the top of the sole. So just be mindful of that, um, that you've got it oriented right so it lines up correctly when you sew this in place. Also, I'd like to point out that the sole is smaller than the bottom of the foot, which means we're going to be gathering the fabric of the foot and trying to make it fit around the sole. So it does take some finagling and you do have to be mindful that you're not getting like a lot of pleats or anything. But let me just show you how we start. We're going to start up at that top triangle notch and we're going to line the point up with the seam that runs down the top of the foot, stick a pin in there, and then go down to the bottom of the foot or the heel and line that little triangle point up with the seam that runs down the back of the leg. Then you go to either side and match up the side triangles. And from there, you just kind of put in some extra pins where you need them. You just want your edges to be as lined up as you can get them and try to kind of smooth out the material as you're pinning, trying to avoid any pleats. But you know what, you guys, this is a handmade item. I get pleats in the soles of my feet all the time and it's no big deal. So just do your best to line up these edges and to smooth out the pleats. And if you get some pleats, you get some pleats. It's okay. It should look like a pinwheel when you're done. Through trial and error, I have found that it's easiest to sew it with the sole of the foot face down on the sewing machine. And again, you can start pretty much anywhere and just start going real nice and slow with this step. You want to try to maintain that quarter inch seam allowance throughout the entire sole of the foot. And I don't know if you can see, I'm going to try to zoom in here. You can pull the fabric and stretch it and kind of flatten it as you're going around. Um, just doing your best to try to smooth it out so that you don't have a ton of, of pleating in the end. The time has come to turn our bear right side out. So I just open up that stuffing hole, reach in and grab the head, pull that through first. And that helps the rest of the body kind of naturally come through. But just gently pull the arms and legs and everything through the hole. And if you are like me, if you end up with really stiff or really thick fabric, maybe you're using denim or something like that, or maybe you print this pattern super small because you want a teeny weeny little bear or maybe you've got arthritis in your fingers and it's hard for you to turn these little arms and legs right side out whatever the reason it's no problem just do like I did and grab yourself um, a pencil just use the eraser end or you can use anything as long as it's got a soft or blunt end and just stick that in there it'll help you turn the the little tiny pieces right side out this next step is totally optional, but I have found that it's a bit of a game changer, and that's making a little bean bag to put weighted stuffing pellets in. And I've found the T 
teardrop shape is a good shape that I like because I leave that tip area unsewn. I just sew all around the rest of the perimeter, leaving a hole up at the top. And then I um, make a homemade funnel just out of like this stiff, uh, I don't know what they call it, craft paper, cardstock paper, cardstock. And I'm going to stick my funnel inside my little bean bag and fill it with these weighted pellets. I've got these linked down in the description box. I found them on Amazon, but I think you could probably find them at a lot of craft stores maybe. Uh, but I just fill it almost to the top. I want to leave enough room so that I can fold that little um, point of the teardrop over because I'm just going to stick it right back under the sewing machine and close it. Close it. I don't want to take a lot of time with this. I don't want to do anything fancy. I don't want to have to hand sew it. So I'm just making a little pouch that will hopefully fit in the back of the bear and sit down at the bottom to help it sit upright and to have a little bit of weight. Once I'm done making my little bean bag, I'll just set that aside for a moment because next I need to grab my bear and a 16 ounce bag of poly stuffing and I begin by stuffing the head. I personally love to put a ton of stuffing in the head because I like it to be really solid and I want it to maintain its shape, but this is totally up to your preference. You can make this as squishy as you want to. So my order is head. And then I do the legs, then I do the arms, then I'll put the bean bag in the bottom of, of the bear, and then I will top that with poly stuffing. Um, and I like to make the belly really squishy and the arms and legs, um, the actual limbs kind of squishy, but I do the hands and the feet really well stuffed again, just because I want them to maintain their shape. One other thing I want to say about this, when you're doing the arms and legs, when you get close to where they attach to the body, I don't put as much stuffing there. Sometimes I don't even put any right where this, the joint is because I want the arms and legs to move more freely. And if I put too much in there, they're going to stick straight out. Now I'm just going to give it the once over after I think I've stuffed it enough. I want to make sure that I don't have any weird lumps or bumps or parts that obviously need more stuffing and that it's just all evenly distributed. I want to make sure my arms move freely, that it just looks good. And my very final step in this is going to be sewing up our stuffing hole. So that is going to be hand sewn. I use a ladder stitch for this step. If you've never done a ladder stitch, uh, this is it. You are essentially grabbing a little tiny piece of fabric with your needle and thread. Then you go over to the other side, grab a little tiny piece, come back over here, grab a little tiny piece, and you just keep going back and forth until you essentially have a, a ladder. And then you pull your thread. And when you pull it, it's like, um zipper. I don't know. It whoop, zips it all up so it's nice and snug and no stuffing's going to fall out. It's also an invisible stitch so it's not as noticeable when you're done. And speaking of done, we're done. The only thing left to do is accessorize your bear to make it your own. And I like to put a big ribbon around the neck, or sometimes I use the shirt collar. If I'm using a shirt from a, a loved one, I'll put the collar around the neck. I like to put bows in the hair. Uh, you could hand sew on a little heart or a special message. You could put on patches and appliques, absolutely anything to personalize your bear and really make it your own. When you print out the pattern at 100%, it sits about 11 to 12 inches 
uh, from the top of the head to the bottom. And it's always in this permanent seated position. This is not a bear that has legs that flop down to make it look like it's standing. It is always permanently seated. But this is our final product. So I love to hear from you guys. Please leave me a comment down below letting me know what type of pattern you would like to see next or which of my current patterns is your favorite. Thank you so much for your support and thank you for watching today. Bye-bye.